Welcome back to the Thursday night preview. Nick is not here, and he's missing a goodie. He okay? is. He we, is. We got the Patriots at the Bucks. This is the first good Thursday night game of the season, and Nick is not here and have to sit through Rams 49ers. Well, well, last week Packers was good, Bears it? was okay. I, I mean, mean, not really. I wouldn't say this is the first good game because the Packers. I mean, the, the 49er I mean, game was true. good. That's the 49er true. game that's was true. it was high scoring. But in terms of teams, it, the best matchup so far. Big the best matchup yet. High, highly touted teams. I will say this is you know, a big one. I didn't think it was going to be as as good as it may turn out to be because, I mean, uh, the Patriots offense looks like the Patriots offense. Tom Brady has ten touchdowns, no interceptions. Looks good. Looking patrioty. Looking patrioty. <laughs> patriotic. patriotic. Whatever the hell. Patriotic. Uh, I think I'm pretty sure they're ranked as the best offense in the league right now, but their defense is dead last and fucking garbage. Not only garbage, historic garbage. They are on pace to be the worst defensive team ever. They, listen. They just gave up 33 points to a team that didn't score more than a touchdown against the Saints defense. Let that sink into your head real quick. Not only that, they lost. They won 9-3 against the Bills at home. Nine points. And they beat up on a San Francisco 49er team, the Panthers we're talking about here. No, I'm talking about just what they did against the Saints, the Panthers. Right. I'm talking about their overall body of work. Before That's true. That. That's true. I mean, Not impressive. Dude, I mean. And then, my bad, but to uh, cut you up, but like Cam Newton has a little good old year, comes in and lights the pats up. Yeah, I was going to say, Nick, is, Nick was like one week uh, early. Like he was saying, the Saints were going to be a tune-up game for for the for Cam Newton, basically, because he's been playing like shit, and it wasn't. Well, the but Saints then, look like the new... I mean, the Pats look like the new that's Saints. That's what I'm saying. The pa- the Pats' defense is like the new Saints. I, c- I couldn't even tell you why. I don't know why, I don't know how to put your finger on it, because last year, this is the team that gave up the least amount of points all season, and well, now they're fucking awful. One thing that we mentioned in the preview show for the Patriots that could have been a problem, which I think is kind of rearing its head and no one's really talking about, is the fact that the Patriots have done things the same way so long. Like, they've done the Patriot way. The Patriot way, the Patriot way, the Patriot way. But this year, I don't know what it was, but they went out and they got guys that aren't Patriots. They went out and they spent on big-time free agents. One of those guys is Stephon Gilmore, who's been god-awful. Uh, and he, he moved Malcolm Butler away from the spot that he was good at, and Malcolm Butler has been even worse. Funches was putting him in a blender. The, uh, everyone so far has been putting him in a blender. So, like... When you're talking about the Patriots in their way and stuff, also Rob Ninkovich. No one really talked about the fact that this guy retired right before the season was over. They didn't. He didn't really give them time to replace him, and he was he was like the leader, the heartbeat of that defense. And as you can see, when Tony Romo calls the games on on these broadcasts, and he's like, "Oh yeah, there's gonna be a run to the left here," right? <laughs> like you see how much it it helps your team to have a guy with such high football IQ and Rob Nikovich was never the most athletic never the strongest but had the highest football IQ and when you take him away from a defense like that I, I wouldn't anticipate them going from first to worst but you know it's going to have an impact that maybe you don't see or you just take for granted because the Patriots are the Patriots yeah a couple of roles in the secondary too Logan Ryan gone like mm-hmm. you said the replacement Steph Gilmore hasn't looked the part think about the Panthers like just going back to that last game no Olsen Right, Kevin Be- Kelvin Benjamin came in lim- hurt a little bit, but he he looked all right, and uh, they just ripped that secondary apart. Cam was running again a little bit. Christian McCaffrey didn't do anything. Christian McCaffrey didn't do anything. Yeah, what is going on? I couldn't even tell you. I mean, this this is a team that before the season started, we're like, yeah, they're gonna be in the Super Bowl, like whatever, blah blah blah. Listen, Which I mean, they still could figure it out. I think I could speak for Tim here that we're enjoying this a little bit as Jeff fans. You know what it is, man? Like, yo, you guys have the same record, don't you? We do. We do. That's insane. Yeah. I listen. We could talk about that another time. But <laughs> I, I <laughs> can't. The Jets were the division. I no, mean, that's not gonna happen. I don't want to like, imagine that. No, but that would be. Hilarious. I want to lose this year. I know. I I'm know. so in a mind state <laughs> for that. But when when you're talking about the Patriots and like, a lot of people are just like, yeah, you know, whatever. It's the Patriots. They can outscore anybody. But can they? Now they did put up 30 on a pretty good team in the Panthers. That's a good defense, right? They they do have problems at cornerback, but overall, that's a good D. I think the big time problem for the Pats is their defensive line. They have gotten zero pressure this year. And you talk about the guys on the outside, but when those guys on the outside have to cover for a second and a half, two seconds longer than usual, it it really, really, really does them bad. And when you can't get any pressure unless you're blitzing, it takes away the help for those guys. So mm-hmm. I think what you saw against the, the Panthers was the fact that Cam Newton felt free. And every time that he stepped up in the pocket, he could either run or pass or 
There was nothing in his face. And that's one thing the Bills did to Cam Newton to make him very, very uncomfortable. They brought in a lot of pressure from the inside, and Cam never had a good game that game. Um, but it's the complete opposite with this one. You saw the Patriots really get nothing up front, and they got dominated on the line of scrimmage, which is not, not a Patriot way. For sure. How about we talk about Tampa a little bit? I was going to say, also with Tampa Bay, I mean, they, Cameron Brait and fucking uh, OJ, OJ Howard. Howard, those are two good receiving tight ends that they have over there. And the Patriots are not good against the tight end. Don't defend well. So that's a bad matchup for them. They've, they've given up 250 yards, 250 yards and three touchdowns to tight ends so far this season. And, and that OJ Howard play came on a misdirection. And it's when OJ Howard came up on the sidelines. The, the Patriots were beat on that exact same play by the Panthers where it was a misdirection to Christian McCaffrey and they came around and swung it out to their other back, uh, Fozzie Whitaker. And Fozzie Whitaker went up the sideline. Right? No so it was two very similar plays. So you do know that the Patriots are like vulnerable that way. So when you're looking at that from a matchup perspective, the emergence of O.J. Howard could be a huge giant factor in this game. I agree. That and how about Mike Evans is looking at his chops. I'm sure every pass catcher on... The Bucks are looking at their chops. Deshaun Jackson might get his breakout game as a Buck. I was I was going to uh, say that I think this is a big game for Deshaun Jackson because yeah. I mean we do say that the Patriots, even though they're not doing a good job of it, their mo is to take away your best receiver or whoever's or your best weapon, and Mike Evans is that guy obviously. And then you have Deshaun Jackson who's a big play guy, big play potential in him. So fucking Jameis starts airing it out. Jameis needs to take the next step. By the way, I don't really like how yeah. he's. I mean. Yeah. He had a good game against the Giants, and that's a good secondary. Yeah, he, but he keeps missing Deshaun Jackson by inches. Yeah, they he gotta needs, get on the same page. They need to time each other a little better because they are missing. They are, have missed like maybe three touchdowns by an inch. Where Jackson had the guy beat, the throw was a little bit longer than where it was supposed to be, or a little bit behind where it was supposed to be, and it either got picked or fell for an incompletion. When they put that together, that's gonna be scary. And who else? Who better to put it together against than the worst pass defense in the league? For sure, I think a big addition too is. Doug Martin coming back this week mm. off uh, suspension. Jaquiz Rogers through three weeks has looked adequate. You know, there's nothing wrong with Jaquiz Rogers. He needs volume and his yards per carry isn't all that. Granted, they did play the Giants, a tough defense. He had 84 yards on 16 carries. Not not the worst. Serviceable. Uh, the Vikes, he got shut down, but that was also a game script. They fell behind big and they couldn't run the ball anymore. Um, but I think Doug Martin back to that team, fresh legs. You got a big boost to that, a big boost to that offense, uh, a veteran presence. Something James could use in that backfield, a mouthpiece, you know, to help him out, keep him calm. And, uh, you know, can't underestimate the return of the Doug Martin. Let's talk, to talk about Jameis a little bit, Jameis kind of took that next step in the last game, I feel like. I, 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 he didn't go I mean, yo, he played, that was his best game all season. Clearly. Like it, and that's yeah. a good pass defense with New York. And when you have that situation where Jameis is playing well, I think this game was a real test for him. Like, even though this is the, be- is the worst defense... Can you step up? Can you make enough plays to beat the defending champions? Can you make enough plays to beat the Patriots? And that is a big-ass stepping stone for young quarterbacks. And if he could pass that stepping stone, I feel really good about Jameis going forward. I mean, if he can't, then I I might be putting a little too much on one game, but you have to be able to make statements like this if you're going to be a real team in the NFL. And they already missed their chance to make one statement, and they here's a chance to make another one real soon. I, I I'm really curious to see this game. And there's really I, no I'm excuse. Really forward to it. There's really no excuse to not do it. I mean, there's weapons galore on that offense. Like as long as he plays his game and he doesn't, you know, we talk about him holding the ball too much, trying to extend plays and making stupid throws when he's like getting tackled and shit. He's yeah, like throw it away, spinning James. away and throw trying to make away. a fucking Eli throw that moron throwing lefty and shit <laughs> <laughs> but if he doesn't do that he takes care of the ball and stuff and, you, and you're right having like doug martin in there might calm him down a little bit and like have someone else in the huddle who could like check him and shit everyone else is well besides like Deshaun jackson i feel like he's younger i might be talking about doug martin in, in a different video coming up <laughs> <laughs> jump on the wave <laughs> yo what's the spread on this game spread is six right now the uh bucks are getting six they're hosting too right Yes. This line started at seven and a half. You know what's interesting about the Pats, too? They lost two I don't know games if I would take home. the Pats here. Pats lost two games at home already. That's the most surprising part. One and two. Pats yeah. at Foxborough. That's crazy. What it's is going on? Right? I don't know. I guess the Panthers, a team that has not looked impressive. Dude, I couldn't even tell you what is going on with this team. You know, we always talk about taking the coach here, right? The better head coach, obviously Belichick. 
I mean, Dirk Cutter is no slouch out. Dirk Cutter is a really fucking good coach. Really good coaching staff in Tampa. Right. But you got to lean Belichick here. But I don't know if that defense on the road on a short week. I don't know if I like the points here for the Pats. Six is a lot. I'm thinking about the points, too. Like, if I had to pick a straight-up winner, I'd pick the Patriots. But I think it was be it was going to be a close matchup. Uh, like three points. Like, decided, you know? Yeah, because I don't. I would say three and a half, four points. I think the Patriots Touchdowns. can score with the Bucks. Yeah, uh, but I also think the Bucks could score at the Patriots at this point. Like, if you're gonna pick any offense to make a run, the Bucks offense have the tools, and the tools came together against the Giants. You saw that they just can't turn the ball over. If they don't turn the ball over, this is a close game. But if the Bucks are turning the ball over, like Tom Brady's gonna score, man. Yeah, their defense is banged up to the Bucks. Like, as long as he doesn't throw picks and there's no, they don't fumble the ball or anything. You know, you can't make mistakes. No Quan Alexander and Levante David for the Bucks. That's huge. But you you can't make mistakes against that team, especially like you know the Bucks don't have like the best defense in the fucking league. But you know Tom Brady's gonna score regardless. And you can't take three against the Pats. Yeah, that doesn't work out, especially with Nick Folking. If you saw that work last week. How about the angry Brady Belichick factor coming off a home loss? They're a bunch of grumpy old men. <laughs> yeah, I know, but that goes a long way. Yeah, Patriots don't lose two games in a row to, uh, a lot. Like if if we were picking this game straight up, I would definitely pick the Patriots. Yeah, so will I. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not taking the Bucks, but it's hard because it, it's also Thursday Actually, night football. I don't football. know. I don't know. Six points is a lot, it's especially if the Bucks score first. It's Thursday night football. I think you have to be, give a giant edge edge to Bill Belichick because no one is better at preparing for teams than Bill Belichick. No one is better at making halftime adjustments than Bill Belichick. And when you're preparing for a team, and you only have three days to prepare. You're going to need those halftime adjustments. You're going to need uh, some kind of intervention at, at halftime to, to change some things around because now you know this team better than you should than you did before. And when it comes to those two things, I don't trust anyone more than I trust Bill Belichick. So I, I think I'm going to take the Pats here, even with the points, although I'm not happy about it. I'm leaning Bucks here. I like the home dog. Home Plus dog six. is a lot. Man, I'm not going to lie. I had the Bucks in my head the whole time, and I just talked myself out of it. <laughs> I do this all the time, people. You, you're taking. The, you're gonna take the. You know, pass? you know what I do think though. If the, the if the pads jump up, I think they'll just keep at padding it on. Oh yeah, because that's. I mean, that's. That's, that's why where I'm you're saying, talking about the anger factor. The anger like, factor is like whenever they lose the next game, fucking just keep throwing it. I don't care. Boss mentioned it. Two big guys missing on the on the defense as well, and you're not playing the Giants here. Yeah, you're playing a team that can bring it, and we saw them get lit up by Minnesota with Case Keenum at quarterback. So, can you not see the Patriots maybe putting a 45 in this defense? I, dude, I, I definitely, can. I could. I, I could. Yeah. yeah. But at the same time, can the fucking... Can they get a stop? Yeah. That's the thing. If they're going to play Warriors shootout basketball... This, this sounds like 40-35, <laughs> but that's a cover. Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah, it is. Ah, I don't know. If they're going to play the shootout game, I'd like the Pats in the shootout game. You got to figure they're going to be fired up, too, for Doug Martin at home. Yeah. He's definitely fired up. Doug, 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 Doug. What was that? Yo, y- did you just ask me what was that? I know what it was, but That's like, why did you do classic. that? Classic. That's what that is. I know it is. I'm mad at you right now. Yeah. What the fuck is this? I don't even know what that is. From the Hangover. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah. You know, I've only seen it like a couple times. Like, I don't know movies like that. Yeah. Nah. The Hangover is a classic. Hangover's and old classic. school. Old school is a classic. I still name my fantasy football team Earmuffs because of old school. That Earmuffs. sucks. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's get final picks here. All right. I, I don't want to I want to go last because I haven't made up my mind. You know what? I've picked the Patriots to cover big spreads twice now and got burned on them two weeks in a row. I'm doing it again. You're Patriots. The, Patriots minus six. Minus six. I'm taking the Bucks at home. Bucks uh, plus six. And, uh, hmm. You know what? I'm going to take the Patriots. 31-28 Ooh. game I'm going with. I'm going to take the Patriots. I think that the Bucks put up 17. <laughs> yeah, it could very well happen. I think the Bucks put up 17 and, and the Patriots put up like 28. Really? So you think it's going to be a low scoring affair? Well, it's not like. What's the over under on the point spread in Vegas? What? Oh, what's the point spread? It's got to be like 53, 54, right? First of all, what are you talking about? It's the over-under. Yeah, yeah, you just combine two things. What's the over-under on the point spread? I'm not a gambler. <laughs> <laughs> the point spread is six. I don't know what the over-under is, but it's probably 
It's got to be high. It's got to be large. A shitty defense versus a pretty good offense. I'd say high 40s if I had to guess off top. Really? Yeah, probably. I think 50s would be it. It's eh. a lot of points. We'll see. It is. I'm going to I'm gonna go like, you know, 28-17, Pats win. 31-28, Pats. Fox covering the spread. 45-35. I'm going with the shootout. <laughs> yes, like going with the bang, 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 bang fireworks. Tim's going for the excitement. It's there. Thursday, baby. Brandon Cooks with a couple downfield. The Rams Chris Hogan Niners. with a couple downfield. All right. Well, that's it for the Thursday night preview. Uh, Pats, baby, minus six. And Bucks. Wow, we have a difference of opinion this time. We do. We usually have the same team, I feel like. This is the first time we're not picking the same team. Is that right? Yeah. The Bucks of you. Shout out to Nick. All right. Fuck it. There you have it. We'll see you next Thursday. <laughs>